All right, here we go, continuing on with cellular respiration and aerobic cellular respiration to be more specific. Up to now, we've talked about ATP production, but only uh, in terms of substrate level phosphorylation, in terms of removing the energy from a substrate uh, in order to create ATP. We're moving on to oxidative phosphorylation, and this is where the energy for the phosphorylation of ADP comes from redox reactions, not directly from the substrate as it did in substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis in the Krebs cycle. So we have glycolysis, we've reduced our coenzymes NAD and FAD, um, we're transporting them to the electron transport chain and we're continuing to break down the original glucose uh, in order to create ATP from it. So let's get some, some uh, kind of visual orientation of, of where we're talking about here. Um, glycolysis, recall, was out here in the cytosol outside of the mitochondria. Um, we did this acetyl-CoA step, uh, which transported pyruvate into the mitochondrion, the Krebs cycle inside the mitochondrion. Now, the electron transport chain is made up of protein complexes, a series of protein complexes um, and other associated molecules, most of which are proteins that are located on the cristae or on this inner membrane. Okay, Here you see structure following function. You see form following function. The fact that there are so many, um, what should we say, folds in this inner membrane gives the mitochondria the ability to have thousands of these different protein complexes all along um, the inner folds of the cristae, the inner folds of the inner membrane. Okay? It's kind of redundant, but that's where they're located. This is the matrix, the very inside part of the mitochondria, and this is the intermembrane space, the space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane. membrane. So this is where we're going to be, this is uh, the electron transport chain all on the, the this phospholipid bilayer here. Okay? All right. So, as I just stated, here's our double layer of phospholipids. Four protein complexes here, they're numbered one, two, three, and four. Um, also, some other associated proteins as well. Um, we have plastoquinone. We have a cytochrome C. There's other cytochrome complexes embedded in this phospholipid bilayer that we're not going to include. Um, this is a little bit of a simplified version, but it gives you the same story. It tells you how we're going to accomplish um, this oxidative phosphorylation. So you see, here are our coenzymes. Here is NADH plus H, um, the reduced version of NAD, carrying electrons from your food, electrons that you ripped off in glycolysis uh, that you ripped off in the Krebs cycle and they're coming now to the electron transport chain for the ultimate payoff. They're going to drop their electrons off at protein complex 1. And in so doing, they're also going to lose their hydrogens. Okay, So they drop off their electrons, they lose their hydrogens. And these electrons are going to be passed just like we saw in photosynthesis um, in those electron transport chains we're continuing to rip energy off of this glucose, but we want to do it in a stepwise fashion. We don't want it to be a huge explosion where we can't harness the energy. We want to do it slowly um, in a manner that we're able to harness the energy more efficiently. So the electrons are, are dropped off here at complex 1. They're passed through plastoquinone to complex 3 to a cytochrome C complex associated with this phospholipid bilayer and then to uh, protein complex 4. In protein complex 4, um, it ultimately passes this electron that came, that was dropped off here, to a molecule of oxygen. Oxygen is highly electronegative, which means it has a huge pull on electrons. So it's going to pass that electron to an oxygen atom, which also picks up two hydrogens, which are floating in the matrix, to release water, okay, which you exhale as a waste product, as water vapor. Now, 
as the electrons are being passed down the electron transport chain through these protein complexes, the energy and the hydrogens that we're leaving in the matrix, the energy is utilized to pump those hydrogens from the matrix into this inner membrane space. The space out here in between um, the, this inner membrane, this folded inner membrane, and the outer membrane. So we're establishing a proton gradient. Okay, recall that a hydrogen ion is, is, is strictly a proton. We're basically forming a battery okay, with a highly positive charge gradient on this side and a negative charge gradient on this side. That's called a proton motive force. And we're going to use that proton motive force to make, to phosphorylate ADP, to put an inorganic phosphate on ADP, to make ATP. Recall that we've talked about this before. That's chemiosmosis. Okay, chemiosmosis, as it says right here, is ATP synthesis powered by the flow of hydrogen ions across a membrane. And in this case, just like we saw in photosynthesis, it's back through that enzyme, ATP synthase. All right? Now, let's go back here. We have NADH dropping off its electrons at protein complex 1. Look at FADH2. It doesn't drop off its electrons at protein complex 1. It drops them off at complex 2. So it's dropping them off a little bit later in the game. Now, there are consequences to that, and here they are. Since we're dropping them off here, we're not utilizing complex 1. And when we don't utilize complex 1, we're going to miss out on this hydrogen that complex 1 is pumping in. Okay? And when we miss out on this hydrogen, we're, we have less potential uh, to create that proton motive force. All right, we're missing out on this, so there's less potential to phosphorylate ADP to make ATP. So FADH2 is a little bit less efficient than NADH at making ATP. That's going to be important um, later on in some explanations. But this is the, this is the big picture, the electron transport chain. All right, a stepwise progression of redox reactions, moving electrons down this chain pumping hydrogens into the inner membrane space, creating a proton motive force. So those hydrogens want to move back into the matrix through ATP synthase, where they, they, that energy is used to phosphorylate ADP to make ATP. Okay? And this is a huge, huge bonus for our body in that it makes tons of ATP through this process. How many? Well, it makes from 32 to 34 ATP in that range. Now, why is that an inexact number? Why can't we say, oh yes, it makes 32 ATP? Why is it a range of 32 to 34? Well, there's a few reasons for that. Okay, number one, the ratio of NADHs to ATP generated isn't always a whole number. Okay, it, it, we can't tell you, okay, um, when, you, when one NADH drops off its electrons, we're going to make three ATP. We say that in general terms, yes, one NADH will lead to roughly three ATP, but not exactly three ATP. Here's what we know. We know that when you drop off one NADH, that's going to result in 10 hydrogen ions being pumped into this inner membrane space. One of these guys is going to result in 10 hydrogen ions being pumped in. We know that. Okay. We also know that it takes somewhere between three and four hydrogens to re-enter, excuse me, to re-enter the ATP synthase three to four to phosphorylate an ADP. Okay? So that tells us that one NADH creates enough proton motive force for about 2.5 to 3.3 ATP. That's not a whole number. So that's one reason why we can't say, okay, um, oxidative phosphorylation is going to make 33 ATP. It's going to be in a range. Another reason, it depends on the type of shuttle that you use to, to transport. Remember this guy? Remember NADH that's made from glycolysis? This has to make its way into the mitochondrion to the electron transport chain. Now, there's a problem, and here it is. This inner membrane is impermeable to NADH. Okay? This is segregated from this outside. There are shuttles that will shuttle this NADH in. Now, 
it's possible that the NADH could pass those electrons to an NAD shuttle, which would then just convert it right back to an NADH, take it in, drop off the electrons at protein complex one, and you're fine, okay? No energy lost. It's also, and that's the case um, in heart cells and in liver cells. It's fine, okay? Everything works out. There's also a possibility, though, that the shuttle that's used is not an NAD shuttle, but an FAD shuttle. So the NADH comes in, drops off its, its electrons because it can't enter itself. It drops them off to FAD. And so you have NADH becoming FADH2, essentially. And remember what we talked about FADH2? It doesn't drop off its electrons until protein complex 1, or 2, excuse me. doesn't drop them off until protein complex 2. So we're missing out on 1. We're missing out on these protons, so we're not going to be able to, to make as much ATP. So that's a problem. If we're using an FAD shuttle, like brain cells, brain cells have FAD shuttles, they don't have NAD shuttles, we're not going to be able to make as much uh, ATP as otherwise if we used an NAD shuttle. Okay, we're going to make closer to 32 rather than 34 ATP depending on that shuttle. And the third um, reason for this, this inexact number is that this proton motive force that we are creating when we're charging this battery isn't always used strictly to make ATP through ATP synthase. Sometimes it's used to bring in pyruvate um, after it's made by, by glycolysis. Obviously if there's oxygen present the pyruvate can come in and sometimes this proton motive force is used for that. Now, if this proton motive force was only used uh, to generate ATP in the electron transport chain, one glucose could generate 34 ATP. But that's not always the case. Okay? And obviously, we have 34 uh, by oxidative phosphorylation plus 4 ATP through substrate level phosphorylation, which would be a total of 38. So that's why we range from 36 to 38, okay? depending on how much of this proton force is utilized, which shuttle is being used, okay? And there's that imbalance or there's that inconsistency in NADH and how many ATP are produced by NADH. So we've made all of our ATP. We've completely ripped down our glucose. We've tore it apart. We've taken hydrogens off of it. We've um, reduced coenzymes. We've got our electron transport chain running and the ATP synthase spinning. Um, and phosphorylating ADP, and that is uh, that's cellular respiration.